You know uh, the saying, lights, camera, action? Well, that's back when they had to turn the lights on just before rolling the camera because they were so hot that they had to like preserve them until the camera was about to roll. That's a fun fact, I never knew that. There we go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Valentina V, and today I'm joined by cinematographer Alyssa Rooney to talk a little bit about the Aperture 600X Pro, the new light release from Aperture. And we wanted to do it a little bit differently this time, not just talk about the light and all its features, but also set up a little scene so you can really see how flexible this light is in a real world environment. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, kind of like where you see your career moving forward. I am a cinematographer based in Los Angeles. Currently, I'm a full-time DP for Frame.io. I also shoot freelance, narrative, documentary, you name it. It would be great to shoot a dark narrative drama, so if anyone has a script, hit me up. I think this is actually a really good example of what Alyssa can do in a dark indie narrative drama. There we go. Because this is a scene from exactly that. So let's take a look at the scene first. I just want our quiet back. And we're more than prepared. From our trap to when he'll arrive. Well, I hope you're right. So Alyssa, every genre, in fact, like every project has its own visual style and a lot of it depends on the story. So what were you going for visually? It's about a husband and wife that end up losing their daughter to someone who kidnaps her. I knew that the scene was gonna take place at night and I needed a way to light the subjects basically. And so having the 600X Pro gave us that bicolor capability, which really helped us with speed, not having to take as much time to gel some of the lights that were happening in the scene. Usually when you're going for two completely different color temperatures, drastically different color temperatures, you would gel that, you would have completely different types of units. But in this case, a lot of it was the same unit, the 600X Pro. So we have some of the furniture pieces already here. This is the piano, this is the fire, this is the counter. Yeah, so our wide shot was around here and we had Dana Dolly track kind of going here um, so that we were able to pass the counter and get a little bit of foreground going into the wide shot. Right away in the wide, I was like, oh, they're fancy. Yeah. I don't even know who they are. There they're just fancy. The scene is really dark in general. And so it's important to me to always have like nice highlights in my frame. I decided to turn the fire on just to get a little bit more color contrast in the scene since we had a lot of moonlight going on. There was a couch here with kind of like an area behind it. And initially there were like black lampshades. So we ended up replacing those lamps with the new ones right back here. And these bulbs we ended up putting the B7Cs into and Taylor, my gaffer, was able to control that wirelessly and we made them really warm. So I wanted those to be around like 2000 Kelvin. If you look in the scene, there's a window back here behind the guy and we ended up placing one little lamp right behind him just to add a little bit of depth to the room going on. And we added a couple of candles right here, the real candles. These were all giving like really nice points of highlight in the frame. So it allows me to light a little bit darker so that at least we're getting like a full total range throughout the piece. So obviously those practicals are playing in the scene. They're like these pockets of warm light, but you obviously also have this like column of moonlight. Yeah, so we had multiple spots of moonlight coming in um, because we were gonna end up looking both directions out of both windows. And so I knew initially in pre-production that I would have to put some sort of moonlight outside of this big window and behind the, the male subject outside of here. 
there's a textured wall that goes on outside of the window and it has like lattices like this so you can like shine light. Through. yeah exactly so we ended up placing a 600x right outside of the window which is the main source of moonlight coming through and this unit had an F10 Fresnel on it uh, with a pale navy gel. So why use the pale navy gel as opposed to like CTB or just leaving it without any gel at all? Between the director and I, we wanted to go for a more saturated look throughout the piece. So being able to add that gel really helped accentuate a lot of the warm practicals that were going on in the room. And being able to push it to 6,500 and place the gel on made it even cooler. And so we got to play with a little bit of the full spectrum of the 600X going into this piece. So we used the 600X as a little bit of fill in the scene, just because it was looking a little bit dark. And we ended up putting this on the fire mode just to get a little bit of that effect on the subject's faces. And we chose the Light Dome 150 so that we could get a nice, even, soft spread of light throughout the space, just to bring up the ambience in the room a little bit. And that was amplifying like the fire that we already had going on, which was giving us motivation for that light. So we put our key light uh, in this back corner of the room and we ended up using the Nova P300C and did a lot of shaping on this light just because we didn't initially have a softbox on it. So we had a lot of two by threes going on just to like cut light off of the ceiling, take it off the floor a little bit, especially in the wide, just so that that unit wasn't spilling all over the room and just creating like a big orange mess. And we really just wanted to get a really nice, like warm light on the subject. I needed a really small unit um, to be able to key him from and just get a little bit more of like a backlight instead of it front lighting them. So this area behind the piano, that's a giant mirror and it's always tricky shooting with reflective surfaces because you gotta hide the lights and you have to hide yourself. So did you run into any problems with that? Yeah, I mean, this entire wall was a mirror. And so shooting a wide from this area meant that we had to be really cautious of where we put the units that were going on inside. We ended up using like this area where the fire was that was kind of like a big wall mm -hmm. to block some of the units that were going on. And so that can be a little tricky, like balancing where you have to place your units. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit and maneuver just depending on like what you're seeing in your wide. I really also like that you had this hallway open because when we talk about cinematic depth, we're really talking about how do you play with that foreground, middle ground, and background. Having that open, even having the, the door open back there just extends the world even more. Yeah, so obviously it's always good to, to, I feel like evaluate the whole situation that you're shooting in because there was a door behind the subject in his close up. And so I made sure to go and flick a light on back there so that we could see a little bit of a practical going on. And that just really helped instead of having like a dark mass behind him that was just like either a closed door or a dark room. Yeah, it's just um, a lot more dynamic yeah. in the scene. I noticed that on the moonlight that's falling onto the shears in the background, it's sort of like a slash. That was not on purpose. I think that was just hitting the back wall and kind of gave us a little bit of shake. We love that. <laughs> yeah, we love that. We love an, we love a happy accident. We love a happy accident. And honestly, we love a little bit of shake. There we go. <laughs> it happens, you know, every once in a while and you're like, let's just leave it. And so, yeah, it was nice that it wasn't just a straight line. It kind of like honestly created um, an unintentional leading line to him uh, in this frame. I'm wondering what was your thought process behind having those shears closed? I went back and forth on having those shears open and closed. And that's something to always kind of consider too when you're going in on a shoot or a scout is like, do we need shears on the windows? What kind of quality are we looking for when we're gonna send light through the window? It so happened that this space already had shears up. I kind of had the option whether or not I wanted the windows or the shears to be open or closed. And it also just added a little bit of like texture going on behind him. It kind of like in a weird way reminds me of the scene in La La Land I was when just they have like the that. green yes, shears. The green. And that's like an homage, I think, to like Alfred Hitchcock and stuff like that. And so even just closing it and having a little bit of illuminated light, I thought was like a fun touch. So when you moved in for this coverage, it was on sticks, right? We actually did have it on the Dana Dolly. That was just so we could have a little bit of flexibility going on when the, sub the other subject would walk in and she was here. And so we did over the shoulders and just to have a little bit of movement going on. For the man's close up, we ended up walking the Nova in over here, just so that we're getting as much of a backside key as we could. In an ideal world, I probably would have even like placed it 
right here. Yeah, um, like but out. Yeah, exactly. Just so that we got even more shape on, on the camera side. But the space is so tight and we didn't really have the tools to be able to do that. So we ended up keeping that 600X Pro on like 0.3% just to get a little bit of glow on his face. All right, well, let's move on to the other over the shoulder. And I think something that's really interesting is this one is at a lower angle. Just because we started with him in the scene, he was a little bit more of the main subject. And so I wanted to play it a little bit more from his perspective the whole time. And so it was nice to be able to compose the her close up with the chandelier behind her head. What did you maneuver for her close up? Yeah, so for her close up, we ended up bringing the camera back here on this Dana dolly, just so that we had a little bit of movement going on. We ended up kind of adjusting just the shears based on where she was standing, just to get a little bit of that dapple gotcha, on her face. Yeah. And you have um, a lighting gag in here as well. What was that? Yeah, so we had a little bit of a lighting gag going on in the close-ups. Uh, at the end of the scene, there's a car that pulls into the driveway. It's the potential kidnapper arriving. The potential arriving. kidnapper arriving. We had a couple options. We could have done this practically with a car over and over again, driving through the driveway, which we don't do that. was honestly just not gonna happen and for sound reasons. And what we ended up doing was placing a 600D outside the window with a reflector on it. And that ended up giving us a lot of spread from that unit, which was nice. And it ended up working out great. That 600D with the reflector was the perfect thing we needed to get like car headlights on a face. There was a pool at this location and our director had the idea to maybe get a little bit of that like water texture going on on the ceiling. So I had my team put a 600X Pro out here by the pool with a spotlight mount on it just to get a really powerful throw into the pool and it really just helped to separate her from the background and gave us kind of that color contrast that we were going for throughout the piece. I think for story purposes also, even though you don't actually see the pool itself, you know the pool is there. Yep. And that adds to the whole like, this is an expensive house where rich people live. Yep, it just like amplified the grandiose feeling of the entire space, yeah, yeah. subtly, which is nice. So I had the team build uh, one final unit right outside of here. And we basically sent a 600X Pro into a muzz flop. And on the 600X Pro into the muzz flop, we ended up putting the pale navy gel on just to continue the continuity with the moonlight hue that we were going for. This was uh, the final shot of the night and we were moving really quickly. So I actually got lucky in that a lot of the lighting that we had in that space already was pretty much set. Mm. It was an end of the scene. The subject is alone and ends up looking out of the front yard. And so I just felt like it was fitting that he was having his own moment and that we were able to jump that 180 and everyone kind of understood the room and the layout. In terms of the lighting, that was the same moonlight that we had going in throughout the scene. We were just able to um, shift the shears and kind of like adjust where we wanted that light to, that blue light to land on his face. How did you find the 600X Pros in terms of their flexibility and the ways that you used it in this scene? Yeah, the 600X Pro was probably the best unit we could have even used for this particular scene. It really played every role, especially having the ability to go from 2700 Kelvin to 6500. We had a lot of practicals going on in the room, and so it really helped us to be able to match the color temperature of the practicals that were happening. A lot of times practicals are great in a frame, but they don't always light an actor. And so sometimes you just need to like stick a, a unit in right next to the practical. It's very versatile, yeah. Being able to create the shape that you want really quickly, create the quality that you're looking for really quickly. The gaffer and I were able to stand at a monitor and control like six or seven lights using Cytus Link. There really wasn't anything that the 600X Pro couldn't do. The Light Dome 150 mostly played as our fill light in the scene. So it's really nice to have the option to have that larger softbox around that unit now. It just really gives you that really quick, easy, soft light on subjects or whatever you need it to be on. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for being here. Thank you for putting this scene together. Was this one for you? It was a blast. Yeah, I had a blast. I could talk about this forever. I could too. I could talk about lighting for hours. <laughs> yeah. So if you enjoyed this kind of longer form breakdown doodle, let us know in the comments. If you had any advice to up and coming DPs, what would that be? I guess I would say it's always important to go into your projects as prepared as possible, but also prepare for your plans to change and be okay with that flexibility. If you're enjoying this content, please follow Aperture. Subscribe to this channel, follow Aperture on social media. You can follow me on social media. Alyssa, your handles are? At Alyssa underscore Rooney on Instagram. 
there we go. So follow Alyssa on Instagram. She always posts like really cool stuff and keep up with her and all of the new cool stuff that she is shooting. And of course, uh, happy shooting everybody. Bye.